Hi everybody, welcome to another Elvistory video. In this video, I'm going to discuss the very first time Elvis Presley recorded a song and where he recorded it. Now the story goes in 1953 when Elvis was 18 years old, he, uh, he wanted to hear himself on a record and he wanted to know how he sounded. So I believe he was working for Crown Electric at that time. He was actually training to be an electrician and he would drive around in, in, um, in the truck and deliver parts for the, uh, for the electric company and help out the other workers, stuff like that he did. And so one day he, um, he used to go past what was Sun Studios on Union Avenue. So he, one day he brought his guitar with him and he finally worked up the guts to go into Sun Studios and with $4 in his pocket, he went in and he saw, uh, not the owner of Sun Studios because he wasn't in, his name was Sam Phillips, the owner of Sun Studios. He wasn't there at the time that day. But his secretary, Marion Keisker, was there that day. So Elvis walks in and she says, how may I help you? So, you know, naturally, Elvis being polite, he said, ma'am, I'd like to record a song. So she said, well, who do you sound like? And he said, I don't sound like nobody. So she said, okay, go ahead and record. So they, she set everything up. She recorded Elvis singing and the first song he recorded was my happiness and he also recorded a b-side which was called that's where the heartache began and after doing that elvis paid for the the 78 acetate now for those of you who don't know um back in those days we had uh not we, but when there was record players and that was the only thing to play music on, there was um, 33 records, uh, 45 records, and 78, and those were called RPMs, and those were revolutions per minute. So anyway, Elvis leaves Sun Studios and he stops by his friend's house because he wanted to play it on the record player. Now the story goes um, that's out there is that Elvis wanted to give it to his mom for her birthday. He might have had those intentions. I don't know. That's still kind of unclear. But he wound up bringing it to his friend's house because he didn't have a record player. The Presleys didn't have a record player. So he brought it over to his friend's house to listen to himself and see how it came out. So... The windup is he winds up leaving at his friend, leaving the record at his friend's house, and he never returned to pick it up. So now his friend, many years later after Elvis passed away, fast forward way ahead to I think the early two thousands, um, this friend of Elvis that had the original acetate kept it in a safe for many years. And he wound up giving it to Graceland and it went up for auction. Now, it was sold to another musician, actually. Jack White of the White Stripes bought it for $350,000. So, and uh, that's how that story went with the first song that Elvis ever recorded. Now, um, going back... Uh, after Elvis recorded the song, he didn't think nothing of it. You know, he went on with his life and, you know, he went, kept working at Crown Electric and, you know, still training to be an electrician until um, a year later in 1954, the owner of Sun Studios slash Sun Records, Sam Phillips, was looking, the secretary had remembered a year before that Elvis had come in. So she uh, said, Sam, I got this boy's number. Why don't you give him a call? And she played 
the record for Sam, My Happiness. So Sam, I guess he kind of liked what he heard. It, like he was, you know, convinced that that's what he was looking for at the time. So he, they still had Elvis's number, I guess, on the record from the day he came in. And uh, Sam Phillips calls up Scotty. He says, look, you know, I got this guy. You know, he's a pretty good singer, but he needs backup basically is what he told him. So, and it, Sam's like, you know, I want you to meet with them and jam with them and see, you know, if you guys could work together. So, you know, Scotty was like, all right, you know, I'll try him out and see what happens. So Elvis winds up going to Scotty Moore's house and uh, they hang out and they jam. And, and uh, I think Bill Black wound up come in too i'm not sure but bill black i believe lived right down the block from scotty moore so anyway you know they get done jamming and <clears throat> scotty calls up sam at some studio and he said sam's like so how did it go and and scotty's like well you know to be to be honest with you you know the musician part nah he said I, I don't think Scotty was too sold on Elvis at that point. So it was a little, you know, he said, but, you know, he did remember the words to all the songs. So, you know, maybe we'll try something. So Sam's like, all right, I'll set something up. So it, they set it up and they go down to Sun Studio. I don't know, a while later, the day, two, three, maybe. I'm not sure on that. But um Elvis Scotty Moore Bill Black they all meet at Sun Studio with Sam and they're going to start to uh try to record some music so you know they start Sam's like you know he's putting a couple of songs out there for them to play and it's just it's just not coming together you know it's just so Sam's like all right let's all take a break so you know, I think uh, at that point, I think Elvis was feeling a little nervous, you know, because he wanted to make it work and he just wasn't, he wasn't in his, el like his element, like he wasn't used to the, you know, the recording and stuff like that. Yeah. So I think he was just a bit nervous because he was like that. But all of a sudden, everybody's just relaxing. They're just all taking a break. Sam went outside to have a cigarette or something and Elvis, Scotty, and Bill are just in the studio, just, in, you know, nothing's being recorded. So they're sitting around, and Elvis just picks up his guitar and just starts playing, starts playing away and just starts singing, that's all right, ma. that song, that's all right. So while he's doing this, Sam walks back in the door, and he hears Elvis, and at that point, um, Scotty and Bill had joined Elvis and they were all jamming on That's All Right Mama. Not recording it, just jamming on it. And Sam walks back in. He's like, what are you guys doing? He's like, oh, we're just messing around. He's like, well, that's great. He's like, now do it again and I'm going to record it. So that's how, that's how That's All Right Mama started. So Sam, they... Long story short, they get it recorded, and everything goes great with the song because Elvis, it was a song he liked to sing, so he felt comfortable with it. It all came together, and so uh, after you know that's over and done with, now Sam has the uh, the acetate, and he takes it to um. A guy named Dewey Phillips was no relation to Sam Phillips. He was a local DJ in Memphis. And, you know, Dewey's like, all right, you know, we'll give him a shot. So um, that night, Dewey Phillips, the DJ, um, on his show, he, he, he announces that, you know, this is a new record from a new local uh, boy or whatever, or a local band. And he puts it on. He said, this is Elvis Presley. That's all right, little mama. So he he plays the song and his phones just went crazy and lit up, lit up, lit up, lit up, lit up. 
flesh and flesh and flesh and you know who is this who is this guy and it was just like that and that's how that's all right mama took off but that wasn't the first song elvis ever recorded like i said my happiness was the first song he ever recorded but that's how that's all right mama if um that's how it took off just like that and uh so things started rolling for elvis at that point and uh he went out and he started you know naturally sam sung him scotty and bill and they just started touring the south elvis scotty and bill and and uh they were together i believe it was for two years and they they played places like texas Latin, louisiana all over the south they played and they you know and their manager i think their manager I, originally scotty i think was running things but i think a guy named bob neal came in and started running things and at that point bob neal was associated with tom parker and i believe it goes uh Tom Parker saw Elvis, Scotty, and Bill play at the Louisiana Hayride. And I think that's when things, him and Elvis, you know, met and then everything took off from there. But I, they were together, Elvis, Scotty, and Bill, I believe, for, it was about two years. And uh, at that point, um, when Elvis took on Colonel Parker, I don't know if Scotty and Bill were too happy about that. I don't remember how it went. I'm not too sure about that. But thanks. So that's the story with Sun Records and how Elvis met Scotty Moore and Bill Black and his time at uh, Sun Studios. Now, Sun, uh, Elvis also, while he was there, he met guys like uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins, B.B. Uh, King, that's just to name a few off the top of my head, but he he did meet a few guys, over, and Johnny Cash also. Um, I believe there's a picture I have in here that I'm going to leave at the end of this video, and it's a picture of Elvis jamming with um, Jerry Lee, Carl, and Johnny Cash, and they were labeled at that point they were labeled the million dollar quartet in my eyes they were the billion dollar quartet i mean my god i mean the level of talent that was in that room at that point in time <laughs> but it's a picture that it's it's a great picture that speaks volumes of you know it's just such a historical moment those guys hanging out and playing together but yeah i have that picture of the four of them in in this uh in this video so um, I hope you guys like this story. Um, I hope it maybe you learned something from it. Um, so I'm going to leave you with a bunch of pictures I have in this video of Elvis and his time at Sun Studio and some, pic some pictures of him and Scotty and Bill and some shows they play. So I hope you guys enjoyed the story and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Have a great day, TCB, and God bless.